In this small series I'm going to be disassembling and following the connections on an Eaton A5000 slave valve. This is used in pretty much all the transmissions, 13 speeds, 15 speeds, 18 speeds, and in my case the MLL. Um, it's used in any, in any transmission that has a high long range um, shifter. This is what actually does the, sh the um, it's pretty much the relay for the shifting. So basically the way it works is so that you don't have, you need big pipes to carry the air to, to make the shift on the piston. Now, if you were to shift those air lines directly, you'd have to have big valves and big, um, yeah, big valves on the shift stick, which is what I have on the S1900. But in order to avoid that, but in order to not have to do that, the manufacturers made this valve, which is just a relay. Um, so that the, what the relay does is you have little valves, or sorry, yes. Uh, little valves, or in this case, to this case is the Road Ranger valve on the shift stick, connected to little pipes, and those move a piston that then connect the big pipes to the to the actual piston. So this is all that this does. This is a transfer. Uh, think of it as as a transfer station. In the same way, it's the same concept as in electricity, like an electrical relay, which you can watch a separate video on. But basically, you have little wires turning on an electromagnet, turning on a switch that then connect big wires. So that's all that this does. Um, I already went ahead and took out the three bolts that hold um, this square piece and you'll note around that there's no actual connections on the bottom block well, except for here and uh, by removing this big nut it gives you access to the uh, pistons on the inside so that looks like there so there you can see the piston and then this hole you have a plunger that's connected to the shift gears in the transmission and basically this is the neutral switch so that unless the transmission is in neutral this piston won't won't shift you can have the air pressure to it but it won't shift it pre-selects now that's another um, question to ask why do you need that why why can you not why do you need to pre-select um, and that that might be for another video so let's go ahead and take a look at the terminals or the parts so the big one here is P, then you have the left, or sorry, low and high, and then another L for low. Then over here you have S. So let's go ahead and take this off. And see the bottom. So right away, as you can, it's very straightforward to see how this works. Um, so S is supply, so this is where the air enters. And if I put, I don't know if you guys will be able to see it, I'm gonna try. But if I put a wire through this hole, then you can actually see, hopefully. There we go. That this port is the same as this port. And that's you pretty much that's that's what I like to do that's what I do to identify see where ports are going now I think I'm not sure yet that these two are connected L and L both are low and then there's just one H which is high um, but we'll get to that later 
And so similarly for this bottom thing, now this rivet, since the rivet that holds this plate, it's not one piece, this thing, it's a two piece, as you can see. So there's a plate, there's the plate there. And then it's held on with this rivet, which also has a hole in it. And this rivet also serves as a port. So it goes, if I stick the wire in there again, you can see it there. And then, as you can see, this hole is directly on top of that and aligns with it. So air goes through there. So air goes in through here. Supply. And I'm pretty sure this comes from the regulator. So air goes in through here. It, it goes in through here this port and it also goes in through this port and then it goes down into this hole and i think this is what moves the piston that way or this way all right so in this next part i'm gonna determine i'll show you where the l ports go to and they are indeed connected and they go to this port right here the middle one and there's a few different ways you could do this to determine um, where each line goes to and you could connect uh, air pressure from a shop line or you could connect air pressure the way I'm going to do it now uh, you could also put liquid in it I wouldn't recommend putting water, but a little bit of gas and see where it comes out of. But in this case, we're going to use a caveman <laughs> air pressure here. So these are the only three connections. And if I close the bottom one. Can't get any more primitive than that. It's not a very tasty method though. <laughs> Turns out that this uh, this here is actually an O-ring and it's not a rivet. And so this case just kind of comes off like that. I had to pry it out with uh, just pry it out, pried it out with a screwdriver and hammer. And uh, you can now see where the passages go to. Um, and it, it was covered with this glue paper gasket here. And um, I still need to clean this side out because, so the bottom one there, this is L. Then this is another L right here and that's high. So, whoops. So, there's the low. It goes into. Is that going to oh I see it goes into there to the other low so as you can see it connects directly again just proves what I said before um, I don't actually have a wire here but anyways so and the high the high goes from here to what just to There a hole there. Oh yes, and then the high goes to this rearmost hole, the hole closer to the edge. And 
interesting. All right, so I just finished cleaning out the uh, plate and there's no um, passages or, or anything on it. So this slot here is really just for the, uh, just for the, for the bolt to go through. So just, just trying to determine where the air in the piston exhaust. So basically what I'm saying is when the low side has air, the high side needs to be empty. And then when the high side has air, the low side has to be empty. So the air inside the valves in the piston and the pipes has to be exhausted, right? So let's say you have air on the low on, right? You can't just switch it off because there's still, you can't just close the valve because there's still going to be air inside. It's still going to be pressurized. So you need to empty that air out. So I'm just looking at the slave valve here and I see this hole in the back here. And that must be the exhaust valve. Uh, we'll determine by testing it shortly, but that must be the exhaust valve. And on the old one, or a slightly different model, um, you'll see that they had these little channels here. So I think the air comes out through here when the valve opens and just leaves through here. Because otherwise, see on this side they just closed it off completely. And on here they purposely made these little ridges. So I think those play a role in the valve. I remember some uh, reading on a forum that if these things get clogged up with dirt, then the valve won't work properly because there's still going to be air locked in the system. So it's imperative that the exhaust hole is clean. All right, so I have the holes aligned. As you can see there. So, as you can see, with this hole aligned, the other one is above this completely empty space here. So it does exhaust through the valve and that just proves it. And similarly, when the valve is moved this way and now the other hole is aligned and sorry, um, which hole is this? This is for the uh, I don't remember now which one is the lower range or higher range, but anyways, when one hole is aligned, the other one similarly stays on all that empty space, so it does this, the air in the pipes and piston does get exhausted through the slave valve, through the inside of the slave, slave valve, then it goes out into the actual atmosphere via a, a, a slot so it's very important that those holes are clean can't be blocked all right so what remains now is to see how the p and the s ports uh, act work here so here's the p port should okay so the valve just comes out like that there's a, an o-ring there That's the S supply. There's a hole that goes through that there. It must go in through there. And exit through here. 
past this and then into the holes like we talked about and then consequently into L or high. So the air goes in through here to the supply. This little hole. Pass that there with the O-ring. Through that hole there. And inside there. There's another um, Another ring there. Another O ring that seals it. Back of this, what's in the back of this here? What is that orange thing? Obviously, there's a little o ring here and a little spring. It has to keep the seal tight against the plate. It moves there. So, as you can see, it's a very finicky it's a little piece of plastic crap. It's a very finicky and flimsy little system. It's not very heavy duty at all. I mean, the parts themselves aren't that bad. Like, this is steel, but um, it's these O-rings. Like, as soon as you get some crap, some oil, that goes into the compressor, into the air compressor, which is, I mean, <laughs> which truck doesn't have that? Then it probably damages these o rings, and then you're in trouble. So, from the workings of the system, I think from the back here, you can see that this is a sealed uh, cylinder here. So, the S, when you apply air to the S, it moves the shaft, the piston, that way. And that causes air to go into the that one is the high. And now when you apply air to the P side, it causes the shaft to go that way back into um back into low and then the air from these pipes the, the one that goes into P and the one that goes into S uh, those are from the uh, from the shift valve the high low range valve and that valve has a separate exhaust of its own so here's the high and low range valve Here's the outlet, and then the inlet, and then there's a little exhaust hole for it right there.